Okay, so this whole message is like a personal thing. And I'll start off with the confirmation verses because it branches off this whole kind of not fitting in thing. And it's Numbers 12, 6. Listen to my words. When there's a prophet among you, I, the Lord, revealed myself to them in visions and dreams. I in visions, I speak to them in dreams. In John 4, 26, then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, am he. So this is branching off my last video called Sticks and Stones, where I talk about the stoning of Stephen. So I I recommend go watch that and, and see how these two kind of, my story kind of goes with that. Um... I heard a song called Unwritten by Natasha Bedingfield and it says no one else can speak the words on your lips because this is my story and no one else can speak this, no one else can share it because it's mine. And I heard the word interracial, I noticed the word teen, and then I noticed the word story on the back of my dog, uh, the dog treat bottle. And then today when I woke up, I came out and my husband was watching wrestling. I've talked about him watching wrestling or it was just a YouTube video about um, Roman Reigns and uh, what's his name? Cody Rhodes. I guess they're going to be in some kind of match. Anyways, when I came out there, I was like, oh man, look at Cody Rhodes because I remember when my kids used to watch it. But in the audience, these people were holding signs for Cody Rhodes and it said finish your story and I noticed the word delight so before I get into all the other things that I usually have in here I'm going to take a minute and talk about where interracial pops in and I've said this in the comments and I've said this on some videos I am half Korean and I'm half white I don't speak any other language I just speak English I know the words that my mom used to say to me as a kid I have those baby words and um, this stuff with k-pop and I'll get into that so here is kind of where this not fitting in goes and this is my story and maybe someone else experience this you know I don't know but the word teen here is I'm gonna talk about when I was a teenager and okay there's no easy way to say it I was in a position where I did not fit in at my church because that was um, mostly where I saw other Korean people that the church that my mom took me to I did not fit in there and they were mostly full Korean or the ones who were half knew how to speak Korean and they knew all the things about being Korean besides the food which was what I knew um, I didn't fit in there at school I didn't fit in with white people Caucasian people whatever you want to call it I didn't fit in with them either because I was too Asian for them, but not Asian enough to fit in with the other Korean people at school. So I was just kind of stuck in this spot where I had to figure out who I was. And when you're a teenager, that's rough anyways. But when you're like me, I'm half Korean, I'm half white, I don't know where I fit in. I could not find a group of friends. I struggled with that. And you know back then it was kind of frowned upon when you were only half does that make sense I don't know if any other culture experiences this when you're half it's like you have to choose one and that's how I felt now I was born in 1983 so when I was in middle school and high school middle school was where I really felt this a lot so whatever when I was about 12 and I, I just didn't fit in. And I don't know how to explain how that made me feel. <sighs> Depressed, sad, lonely. I 
I decided at that point I was going to choose. Okay, I was going to choose what I was going to be. And I chose to just be, like, be white. I chose to take the part of me that was Korean and kind of just push it to the side. Because in my school, it was just easier. Even though we had a bunch of mixed races, for me personally, this was a battle I was dealing with personally. And so I chose to just be more American and make it work as good as I could. I mean, I, I was weird. I didn't fit in. I, at a young age, realized that I wasn't pretty like all the other girls. And I made friends with mostly boys. And so in my last video, I talked about in elementary school, I had a friend named Steven. And at that time in elementary school, that was who my best friend was at that time. But, you know, you get into middle school where everybody's going off doing their thing, finding their clique, and I just couldn't find one. I couldn't find where I fit in at all. In high school, different story. I found my crew of people that I hung out with, but we were all different different races, different, you know, upbringings. I just found my little group of two or three people um, that I hung out with. But in middle school, it was, it sucked. And where this is going, why I'm sharing this is because after my mom passed away, she passed away 12 years ago, I realized that I wished that I had embraced that part of me. It was a part of me that I just put behind a closed door and never dealt with it. You know, like I said, just Korean food, I ate that, but but as far as learning different cool things about the Korean culture, now mind you, there's stuff that is not for me, like I talked about in my magic videos or whatever, tarot cards, you know, their gods or something like that, that's not for me, but like the clothing, the music, K-pop wasn't a thing then. So my boy bands that I watched were uh, Backstreet Boys. That was my, I love me some Backstreet Boys. But I I wanted to learn how to play that string instrument where it was like a lyre and they just played that music. It sounded so cool. And a song that I like by BTS, the, the uh, his name is Sugar, but his solo was he goes by August D, which is really just DT Sugar backwards. Um, I like his song called Hegum, which is a Korean instrument that I, it sounds cool. And I wish I had learned to do that. I wish I had learned to make Korean food. I wish I had learned to speak Korean. And I don't know, I'm trying not to cry. So I'm going to hold that back because I'm going to get into this verse and it's going to go to the word delight and it's psalm 37 4 and it says take delight in the lord and he will give you the desires of your heart and so back to music this k-pop thing is more than just oh this song is cool it has a verse that's similar to something in scripture because if you think about it, God made everything. He made everyone. And there is these people in these bands, they make these songs. And if you don't think that God, even if they're not turning to him, put some words in there that he knew someone like me would get a dual benefit of this. I'm hearing a tune of a song in a language I don't know. And I have to go look it up to get the translation to English. But at the same time, it's a translation that might be a word or a phrase that could match up with scripture where I could see it and be like, oh man, this reminds me of that song, this, this verse. But I'm also learning to speak Korean because I'm seeing these songs and when I hear these songs, I know what they mean. Maybe I don't know exact words just yet, but I'm singing these songs and I'm speaking Korean. And I get the gist of what the song is about because I had to go look up the lyrics. Those were desires of my heart 
that God gave me. That also allows me to share a message. And that's how good God is. Because it wasn't a desire that I thought that I was asking him for. He just knew what was in my heart. He knew it was something I wanted. Um, so these aren't tears of sadness. This is just tears of how great God is to give us things that we don't even know that we want. That we don't even know that is missing. And this shirt, it's a BTS shirt and it, the symbol is from the album of Love Yourself. And I remember in my sleep, I heard a tune to a song and I called my sister. I'm like, what is the tune to this song? Cause she's a way big BTS fan. And it was for a song by Jin. And I think it was called Love Yourself, The Answer. And it the, the lyrics are, I'm the one I should love. Because I have just hatred toward myself for a long time. Like self-loathing. I don't know why. I can't explain it. But it's just something that God is working with me to learn how to love myself. I mean, if you haven't watched that video, um don't get discouraged where I talk about my eyebrows here they are I'm learning how to love myself just the way they are damaged from 90s over plucking and he also kept leading me to videos about castor oil and how I didn't know that castor oil helps with growing hair so let's see what happens I only just started doing it for like a week so girls who commented on that about their eyebrows Let's watch my eyebrow journey with castor oil. Um, so this song called, uh, it's called A uh Good. So U-H-G-O-O-D by RM of BTS. And it says, I feel so lonely. Yeah, I feel so lonely when I'm with me. And a song called Blue by V of BTS. It says, what if I show you and make it all new? But baby, you're still blue, blue, blue. Because I still struggle. I'm so sorry that I'm crying about this. I thought, oh, when it's personal and something that I'm still going through, I'm just learning how to love myself, right? So anyways, like, um, something I had thought over this whole time. So over my whole spiritual journey of walking with God and learning to to call out to him, learning to lean on him, my whole journey, I still will get in my head. I overthink. I say things like, oh, I'm not good. I'm not pretty enough. My hair is crazy. My hair is thinning. Just all the things that happen with age. I have all these white hair. And... I soak into criticism um, I'm looking at my notes because I just don't want to keep talking freely otherwise I'll steep I'll start crying <clears throat> so I had this dream where V from BTS he's my favorite member of BTS which by the way my sister for my birthday she bought me a cake and she put V on the cake so I mean that was it was great. I had a great birthday and I got to, you know, reminisce on what it would have been like if the boy band I was into was a Korean boy band and not Backstreet Boys, you know? Anyways, so in this dream, V is sitting in front of me or sitting next to me on the couch and he turns and he looks at me and he puts his hand like this by my face. He doesn't touch my face. He just puts his hand like this. On my, by my face and he begins to sing a lyric from one of their songs called blanket kick and it goes you're so ipo 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 which ipo means pretty so god is using these songs to tell me i'm so pretty i'm so pretty and just he loves me the way that i am and when i'm sad or when i'm not feeling good I often hear this scene or I see it in my head you know you can picture it in your head but I hear it 
Um, it's from a show called True Beauty, and in this show, this boy is feeling, um, like his girlfriend is sad and he's trying to cheer her up. And he, he does his hands like this over his face and he goes, Otuke, 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 which means, you know, um, uh, what's what's the matter or something like that and I like you what's the matter and I heard the word kenchana kenchana which means it's okay it's fine don't worry and then I got to a song called two baddies by NCT which is in Korean so these are all k-pop songs I'm talking about and it says um, one of a kind influences me look at my eyes which, by the way, I'm going to make another video, like a part two of my story, because someone keeps commenting in my videos about what's wrong with my eyeballs. I'll get to that. Um, the other lyric is stand against those dangerous thoughts. Stand against those negative thoughts that I have toward myself that you may have toward yourself, because I've said it before. It's just the enemy trying to make you attack yourself. Um, it says, this time I'm not going to be shy. Nothing can stand in the way. Forget all the worries. It only makes you anxious. And then I have a dream. And so this dream, I was sitting in a car that had white seats. And it reminded me of a, like an old Cadillac. But inside the seats were like white leather, like bright white leather. Like nothing had ever touched it before. And I could see that there was a car parked in front of me and a car parked behind me. And I rolled the window down and I look out and there was a girl standing outside and she was tall and she had dark hair. I could tell that she was African American, but she was very light skinned. So I just kind of knew she was half white or half something else. And she looked at me and she said, so what do you have? And I answered her. I said, well, I have dreams and songs and movies, you know, stuff like that. And she said, yeah, I have dreams and all that stuff too. But like, what do you have? What's your thing? And I said, oh, oh, it's K-pop. And that was the end of it. I mean, other people were getting into cars. We were all going somewhere. And I saw a YouTube reel. And in that YouTube reel, it mentioned April Fool's. And so I was like, April Fool's this devotional I opened up to April 1st I put that tape there because I wrote some notes in there that are personal and I'm gonna read not the whole thing but like half of it and it says the time is now what you've considered delays in your calling aren't delays at all. There are no delays in my kingdom. Get ready to follow my guidance as your divine coach and, and understand that my purpose extend that my purposes extend far, far beyond limited human vision. You must trust me to call the plays. You must see yourself as a global team member. No one is called as a lone prophet today. I'm calling teams to do the work of the gospel. I'm strategically gathering called saints together to reveal my love to the world in a greater move of my spirit than has been unfolded until now. Until now. I hasn't seen nor ears heard the things I have prepared for this time. And I'll get down to the Bible verse. It's Mark 16, 15, and it says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation but I had been seeing the number 1616 it was a show I was watching I was on it just says episode 1616 that's just how the k-drama did it but when I paused the show it was also on 1616 and when I walked today I saw the number 1616 and oh I didn't write it here in my notes but it is the other part of that mark so it's mark 1615 and Mark 1616. Uh, Did I say that right? Mark 1615 and 1616. So go read that one. I forgot to write in my notes. Um, and then I got this verse before I got out here, which makes sense with the dream and this devotional. It says, Acts 1727, God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out to him and find him, though he is not far from any of us. And I've said this before 
in the BTS video that I did where I said BTS and or Bible and BTS um it's in my list of videos where I talk about the number of k-pop fans there are right I'm not trying to gain followers or anything like that at all but my point is there are so many people who listen to k-pop music and if I can somehow make them see a lyric the way that God does for me like I put God in all my songs so if you sing a lyric in that song and it reminds you of God that's the point so we're trying to get all these people who listen to this k-pop and bts to feel god in that song like the song i shared before microcosmos we're all we're all stars shine right i put a verse to it shine you're not you are on what is that you're a light on a hill or something like that if they could hear that song and think man god is calling me to shine my light i'm gonna I wonder what that verse is about. Let me read that verse. That's the whole point of me and these K-pop songs. For me personally, because God's giving me my heart desire, my heart's desire, but also it could bring someone else to Christ. Um, and I'm going to give an example. So it's not a K-pop song at all. It is an example that was of my daughter. And I said in the other video, she's under 10. She came to me when I was going into my closet to pray and she said to me can I come in there with you and I said sure I invited her in to this quiet time and prayer we're supposed to teach our kids how to pray and be the example to them and we were sitting there being quiet she says I was holding this cup I never even drank it I don't think and I'm running out of water good thing I'm almost done so when we're sitting there quiet, she just looks at me and she says, I can't get this song out of my head. These are the only words I know because it was on a video that I watched on kids YouTube. And the lyrics she told me, which is from a song called James Young or by James Young called Infinity. So the lyrics she said to me were, cause I love you for infinity. Oh, 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 I love you for infinity. And I told her, you know what? Think of it like this. I love you and I love you so much, but God loves you more. I said, I could never love you as much as God does. No matter how much I love you, God loves you to infinity. He loves you more. He's, he loves you more because he made you. And she began to cry. And I told her, I said, why are you crying? And she said, well, I never knew what it felt like to have someone to, to know that someone loves me that much, that they love me to infinity. Infinity never ends. So there's someone who loves me that much. God loves me that much. His love never ends. His love endures forever. She didn't say that. I'm saying that now because that's just what came to my mouth. But why not take something that's going to make someone feel better by putting Christ in it. And a while back, and I said this in my BTS video, and this is when I did not realize that God was giving me my heart's desire because that video was months ago. In my sleep, I heard the phrase, Obuba which is a, a word that my mom used to say to me when I was little, which means like a piggyback ride. Or we would carry, you know, Korean women carry babies on their back. So she, my mom did that with my kids with this wrap. You know, you want an obaba? You get on the back. And then I got led to this verse. Isaiah 46, 4. Even to your old age, when I talked about my gray hair, I am he. And even to your gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and will deliver you. So, again, K-pop secular music may not be the favorite that I reference. But I hope this makes you understand how I'm listening to this. God's dual purpose is happening. 
he's filling my heart's desire where I'm I'm getting to learn Korean words this way. I'm enjoying Korean music. I'm learning about things when I watch these K-dramas with my sister, but God is still using K-drama scenes to apply to these messages that I'm sharing. So as Christians already here who are watching this, it's just cool how it fits, right? But for someone who's not a Christian, who hasn't accepted their Christ, or hasn't accepted Christ in their heart, how cool is it that they might start seeing Christ in the things that they are listening to, in the things that they watch? So, always find the light. Don't let anyone blow out your light. All right, bye.